readers, I'm Amy and I'm your nonfiction feminist. I'm back with another I don't read that video. If you don't know already, I don't read that is the series that I am filming on genres that I don't read that include books that I actually surprisingly really really loved. So today I will be discussing fantasy. As per the title, I don't read fantasy. I'm not a big fan of fantasy. I've never been the biggest fan of fantasy. I guess I read it more when I was younger, when I didn't really understand my tastes as well. But fantasy's just never been my thing. I'm one of the rare few. But I have a list of books from this genre that I have absolutely adored. So if you are like me and you don't read a lot of fantasy, maybe these are some books that you should give a try. I'm going to start off with, but of course, Harry Potter. I haven't actually reread this series in a little while because it's a little young adult for what I typically read. However, I still really love the original series. Um, I have all of the original books, not all of the original covers, because this is actually my husband's copy. I have the first four books in paperback. I recently found the fifth book in a paperback, and I also have a hardcover of the fifth book, which I have not found the paper cover since I took it off when I was little. I don't have the cover for the sixth book because I took it off when I was younger, and I don't have the cover for the seventh book because I also took that off. I vastly prefer paperbacks to hardcovers. Again, I feel like I'm one of the few. Not only are they more comfortable to hold for me, but also I just don't like having the paper covers on hardback books. They just get in the way. They're always like flipping around and then I decide to use them as bookmarks and then they get bent up and it's just more trouble than it's worth for me. But anyways, I grew up loving Harry Potter just like most people my age. Um, the earlier books I don't actually love all that much because they're like elementary school reading level which is far too young for my reading level um <clears throat> my honestly my favorite book and this is going to be another kind of unpopular opinion my favorite book is book seven but that kind of fits my reading pattern where the last book in a series is typically my favorite because i really love it when everything just gets wrapped up yes it's one of the most devastating books for me but i like having everything wrapped up Book five is by far my least favorite. It just kind of goes on and on and on and gets more into not political stuff, but just, it was a tough read for me. It took a while for me to get through that book. Anyways, other fantasy books that I love, The Princess Bride. Yes, it was a book first. It was a book before it was a movie. You should read the book because honestly, the movie was great, but the book was better. Um, William Goldman has a thing for parentheses. He will have like pages and pages of parentheses because the idea is that this book was written by S. Morgenstern, who is a fake author. <clears throat> but the, the premise of the book is that this man, S. Morgenstern, wrote a book called The Princess Bride. And William Goldman, in this world, has kind of rewritten, not rewritten, The Princess Bride, but he like, he writes The Princess Bride and then he takes out all of the unnecessary stuff and puts them in parentheses. And it is so, so funny. Again, the book is way better than the movie. And the book was great, or the movie was great, so you can imagine how great the book is. Super humorous. I don't read a lot of humor. It's just one of those genres I don't really reach for much, but this book is gold. Pure gold. I love it. I will never get enough of this book. Next up we have Name of the Wind, which I've read in the last year on insistence from a close friend of mine. I didn't really think I was gonna like it, but it had me from page one. Whenever Patrick Rothfuss starts talking about the three kinds of silence, I'm just like, okay, I'm hooked. This guy is an awesome writer. People kind of debate on the story and especially where the second book goes, but he's, he's great at writing. Name of the Wind follows this guy who is in a troupe. It's kind of like 
a circus sort of a situation. Um, and his people are very looked down on because most people think that traveling troops are like thieves and stuff and his troop isn't. They're just like a people that does a lot of traveling. And his whole troop and family is killed and he's got this dream to go off to university and so he's traveling around. He becomes homeless for a while. He makes it into the university. Just, it's, it's this story that goes along finding him across all walks of life. I will say I don't like the main character. I think that his ego is far too big for him. Of course, with what he achieves in the book, he kind of deserves to have a big ego, but still, like, a little humility would go a long way for his character. All of this to say, I still, I really enjoyed the series. Um, I am waiting for the third book to finally come out. I don't know that I'll reread the series before I read the third book. It would probably be a good idea for me to reread the series, but we'll see how I feel then. And another book, this is a surprisingly long list for a genre that I don't really like much. Uh, Girls Made of Snow and Glass. I've talked about this book several times before. Girls Made of Snow and Glass is a retelling of Snow White and it is absolutely phenomenal. It has two perspectives, the perspective of Snow White and the perspective of the stepmother. And the depth that is added to the character of the stepmother is just phenomenal. I love what Melissa Bashardust did with the stepmom. Like, I think she's actually my favorite character of the two, just because there's so much going on with her. It's... It's awesome. I am actually going to do a video on retellings as well, since I don't do a lot of retellings. I don't read retellings, I'll just say that, but Girls Made of Snow and Glass, highly recommend. It is more of a young adult book, but it didn't feel like the writing was necessarily too young for me, which was nice to see because a lot of young adult, the writing honestly is just not up to par, but very good book, very well done. Last book, and this is going to be another video on problematic authors, the last book I have here is Mists of Avalon. Yes. Marion Zimmer Bradley is a horrible, terrible human being, but this is actually, with the exception of Harry Potter, this is one of the first fantasy books that I actually really fell in love with. I adore The Mists of Avalon. This is a retelling of King Arthur, of the King Arthur legend from the female perspective, mainly, I think her name was Morgana? It's been a while since I've read this book. More, more gain. In this book, it's more gain, but I think she's had a couple of different names. But it's mainly from her perspective. She's supposed to be the big bad witch, I guess, in the original book, which I've the original story, which I've never read. Uh, and it's it's so good. Like. She's still a really dark character, but like you get the reasons for her darkness and the reasons for her attitude. And it really makes King Arthur out to be not the best or not the smartest leader of his people. And it's got some politics in it and it kind of goes into like a big takeover of all these lands and the dying of certain cultures. And it's got a lot to it and I really loved it. Unpopular opinion. I think it's okay to read problematic authors. They teach us things, they just because they're problematic doesn't mean they don't have great work. I will go into this more in my uh, problematic authors video. I don't know when that's going up. It'll go up eventually. But these are all of the books that I have for fantasy, a genre that I don't read. <laughs> I hope, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have any fantasy books that you would like to recommend, go ahead and do that. Um, in September I will be reading Mistborn, so we will see how that goes. I've heard good things. I will see you all in my next video. Have a wonderful month. I hope that you are joining in my backlist book challenge because that's going to be really fun and I think booktube as a whole needs to focus more on backlist books. Hope to see you in my next video and yeah, have a good one.